So Chinese President Xi Jinping is calling for maximum restraint in Ukraine and says that China is, quote, pained to see the flames of war reignited in Europe. It's Xi's strongest statement on the conflict to date. China also announced this week that it is sending nearly $800,000 in aid to Ukraine. So to discuss China's role in all of this, I want to bring in Jane Perlez. She is the former Beijing bureau chief for The New York Times. Thank you so much for joining us. So... Um, Beijing is always precise with its language, right? Careful with its language. What do you make of the most recent statement that we're hearing out of China and this pledge of aid to Ukraine? Well, it's very careful wording. Mm -hmm. You'll notice there's not any mention in the statement of Ukraine. There's no mention of invasion. And 800,000... Uh, less mm -hmm. than a million, no, how, how much did you Let's say? Look, well, how much? It's not very much. It's it, right. It's not very much. $800,000. Yeah. It's a bit of a drop I mean, it's, yeah. it, China is the second biggest economy in the world, and Congress is discussing $14 billion. Right. So I think this is a fairly pathetic uh, offering by China, actually. And he's trying to keep up this idea of neutrality. But in fact, he's very close to Putin. They are, he's called Putin his best friend. Mm. Xi Jinping, the leader of China, has met with Putin 38 times since he's been in power right. in 2012. How many other leaders have met 38 times? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot. And they have a shared view. They both want the West to get out of the way. They would like to see America to decline. And I think they're both very surprised that the West has been so galvanized and the United States is leading this charge mm -hmm to um, you know, get back to get back at Russia. Mm -hmm. So what I thought to myself though in watching this is yes they have a shared ideology but out of our business. But China and Russia are in very different places, particularly when it comes to their economies. Um, China has spent, you know, the past several decades um, using their money to uh, to make headways in different countries, right? And, and Russia has been it's a Russian Russia's economy has been sort of contracting. Because they have, I would think, different priorities, how much do they really share here? And could Putin's activities be harmful to China's geopolitical plans? Well, it certainly doesn't suit China to have mm -hmm. uh, instability. They have thrived on st stability yeah. in the world in the last 20 years. Right. Um, but the, And they have a huge... Russia is now the junior partner. It used to be reversed. The Soviet Union was a powerful one, and China was poor and isolated. And now it's totally reversed. Mm -hmm. But I do think that China will find a way to strengthen, keep strengthening its internal domestic economy and try and keep itself mm -hmm. um, cordoned off mm -hmm. from the worst from the worst in Europe. They, he's been talking. Xi Jinping's been talking a lot about bringing the economy back into China mm. so that he trades less with the United States. So in some ways, this may suit him. Okay, last question. Uh, You've you got to give me a quick answer. There have been a lot of comparisons between Russia and Ukraine and Taiwan and China. Is that a fair comparison? I don't think so, really. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Xi Jinping's going to make a, a run for tai Taiwan this year or next year. He will at some point, perhaps, but not right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was concise. Jane, thank you very much. Thank you.